OK, let's make a start. The first thing that we need to look at is the 3.5 inch floppy disk. This is the original form of removable storage. The disk itself is made from thin brown mylar plastic with a ferrous iron coating. It's very, very flimsy, very, very easy to damage, so it's stored with inside a rigid plastic case. The disk is read by a floppy disk drive and the original form of floppy disk drive was an internal device that connected to a floppy drive controller on the motherboard by a 34 pin connector and here we have a photo of the 34 pin connector. The only thing that can be connected to this controller is a floppy drive or a floppy drive or a floppy drive and the connection is made by means of a flat ribbon cable. This ribbon cable, you will notice, has a seven wire twist by one of the connectors. And it's the only cable in the case to have this twist. So a floppy drive cable is easy to identify. Any device that's connected to the connector by the twist will become drive A. Any device connected to the middle connector will become drive B. And the connector at the end of the cable with no twist connects to the motherboard. You may notice that this particular cable has a red stripe down one side and the red stripe denotes pin 1 and pin 1 of the connector must connect to pin 1 of the device or pin 1 of the motherboard. Any device that's connected by the twist becomes drive A and here we have a photo of a drive that's been connected as drive A. These days you can also get external floppy disk drives. These don't connect to a floppy drive controller but connect to other buses within the system. You may get a drive that connects to the universal serial bus or a Firewire drive that connects to the IEEE 1394 bus or even eSATA. Floppy disks store their data by means of magnetism. The read-write head in the drive detects polarization and the disks have a door on them to allow the head to read the media. By today's standards, floppy drives store very small amounts of data and that's why we tend to find that they're being phased out on the modern systems. Even older systems had a five and a quarter inch floppy disk drive. This really was a floppy disk drive because it didn't have the solid plastic outer of the three and a half inch, but a cardboard cover, again with a mylar disk inside, and the whole disk could be flexed, hence the term floppy drive. These hold even less data than the three and a half inch disks. The amount of data that a floppy disk can store is governed by several factors. The number of tracks and the number of sectors that each track has. Data is written in concentric circles called tracks and floppies have either 40 or 80 tracks. Each of the tracks is divided into a sector or if you want to think of it this way boxes to hold data and the more sectors that we have the more data that a disk can hold. And here we have a chart giving us some of the figures. The original three and a half inch floppy disk had 80 tracks with only nine sectors per, tra per track. It was called double density and it stored 720 kilobytes of information. As systems got faster and faster and software got larger and larger, double density wasn't up to the job, so a new disk was released called High Density. This again was a three and a half inch disk with 80 tracks, with 18 sectors per track, and stored 1.44 megabytes. In Asia, we had an even bigger floppy disk drive. The actual size of the device was still three and a half inches, but it had 80 tracks with 36 sectors per track and would store 2.88 megabytes. As we said earlier, five and a quarter inch disks store less data. The original five and a quarter inch disk had 40 tracks with nine sectors and stored 360 kilobytes of information. 
The later five and a quarter inch discs had 80 tracks with 15 sectors per track and stored only 1.2 megabytes of information. And that's probably why we don't see them these days in modern systems. Floppy disk drives always suffered from the fact that they were very, very easy to overwrite. So they came with a write protection tab. If we look at the photo, we can see that there's a hole through the disk. Inside the drive, there's a light beam. If the light beam can shine through the hole, the disk is said to be write protected and we're unable to write or to format the drive. If we slide the tab across the hole so the light doesn't penetrate it, it then becomes what's known as unprotected and we can write or we can format the disk. When we format a disk, it writes the track and sector structure. It creates something called a file allocation table and it then becomes ready to store data. What we have to be aware of is that formatting a disk is a destructive process. If the disk contains data and we decide to format it, the data on the disk will be lost. We can buy floppy disks that are pre-formatted either for use on a PC or a Macintosh. What we have to be aware of is that the formats are mutually exclusive and we can't use a disk formatted for say PC on a Macintosh or vice versa. Okay let's have a look at formatting a floppy disk. To do this we're going to navigate to the floppy drive and notice that the floppy drive has a floppy disk in it which has a document saved on it called important.doc. If we navigate back to the drive and we right click it, we get a context sensitive menu that allows us to format the disk. For the benefit of this exercise, I'm going to perform a quick format. Notice that when we click start, we get a warning message saying that formatting will erase all data that's on the disk. We get the option to cancel to save our documents but just to show what happens, I'm going to say OK. The disk is formatted. When we go back, as the warning stated, we've lost our documents. And that's a quick demonstration on how to format a disk. Hope that was useful.